Dos. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee and Mr. Chair, thank you for allowing me to testify. My name is Bruce Hillis, a Missouri taxpayer from Mexico, Missouri. I'm testifying in favor of this bill. However, the bill should be amended or before it goes forward to include full repeal of all prevailing wage laws. Why? Because prevailing wage laws increase cost to the taxpayers of Missouri. They do so by making it over burdensome and by limiting competition. This is not complicated. It's pretty basic supply and demand stuff. The most basic economic axiom is supply and demand. If you increase the supply, costs go down, prices go down. If you reduce the supply, prices go up, costs go up. Prevailing wage laws reduce supply by reducing competition. The proponents of uh, prevailing wage laws and those that will oppose this bill will try to complicate it, but it's still basic, simple uh, supply and demand. They'll try to disguise it, and they'll try to com uh, obfuscate the issue with their motives, but, but they won't talk about the real effects, and that is increasing cost by reducing competition. Instead, they'll talk about such emotionally stirring issues as less experienced workers, higher injury rates, lower wages, lower health coverage, and issues of harmful competition without a prevailing wage. These claims won't be backed by scholarly studies unless they're commissioned by the proponents. Most of the claims will be supported by anecdotal evidence that relate maybe to some specific micro effect, but not to a macro effect for the entire state of Missouri. They'll also claim that all the deficiencies or problems of prevailing wage can be fixed by just amending the way the reporting is done. That'll fix everything. Well, it costs just as much often to pick up a pencil as it useless effort to pick up a pencil as it does useless effort to pick up a hammer. So those claims are utter nonsense. I'd like to address just two areas that will probably be mentioned, if not mentioned today by the proponents of this bill, or the opponents of this bill and the proponents of prevailing wage, proponents of prevailing wage. It's certainly been used in their advertising against changing Missouri's prevailing wage laws. It's come over the radio waves during this past year. At first, at first issue that they claim is that prevailing wage laws produce fair and competitive bidding. This is a twist on the preposterous claim, often used by proponents, which maintains that construction industry is uniquely subject to harmful competition that slashes wages and reduces standards. That when wages are set by law, such harmful competition is eliminated. That's a claim of emotional argument, not objective analysis. Think about it, and logic alone will tell you that if, if the wage portion of a contract is fixed and a bid is secured, contractors just likely attempt to look to other areas of costs like safety or other issues to make up cost overruns or loss of profits. It is construction management, evaluation of the contractors, performance bonding, monitoring and oversight that ensure quality and other that quality and other construction standards are met. Not the wage rate. You can pay me as much wage rate as you want and I'd still do finished work with a hatchet and a claw hammer. I can't do it. Well, I, the number two issue that you're likely to hear, and you certainly have heard on the airways by proponents of prevailing wage, is that the lack of prevailing wage promotes unskilled workers. Again, that's utter nonsense. Proponents of prevailing wage laws maintain that in the absence of prevailing wage laws, that training of construction workers is inadequate. The inference put forward is that the industry depends on unions for an adequate supplier of trained workers. There's no evidence that there is more of a market failure in the training of construction workers than there is in the, any other occupation group. There's community colleges, 
private technical institutes, and training re and other training resources. In addition, there is the on-the-job training for unskilled helpers, which, by the way, exists much more in the free market than it does in free market con con construction contracts than in prevailing wage contracts, where contractors are motivated to restrain from hiring such unskilled and unproductive workers due to the cost disparity between the prevailing wage that they have to pay and the productive value of that worker. These and other claims advanced by the supporters of prevailing wage are a complete disguise of their real single purpose, to limit competition by the force of law. This purpose applies to both sellers of labor and sellers of construction contracts. The sellers of labor, which unions and other organizations, want to limit the competition from others whether they're out of state, like the example you heard, or whether they're from a, a, another rural area or wherever, they want to limit the competition that others might offer their labor at a lesser price. And sellers of construction contracts want to limit bidders to only those that pay com comparable wages, whether it's the force of law, or the prevailing wage law, or the force of union contract. Why is the real purpose of limiting competition disguised behind these claims? As anyone with the most basic understanding of the way that markets function knows, when competition is limited, prices rise. It's basic supply and demand stuff. Added costs due to increased wages or the burdensome cost of reporting and all of the things associated with prevailing wage <coughs> requirements is at the expense of Missouri taxpayers and are results in less government buildings and infrastructure that would otherwise be possible with free market being secured in the absence of prevailing wage laws. Of course, proponents of prevailing wage can't sell a prevailing wage scheme on the singular purpose of rising prices, raising prices or costs, so they must attempt to justify the law with other false and misleading claims. While there are many economic studies by scholars that have no dog in the fight that debunk the claims of proponents of prevailing wage, you need only rely on your own economic knowledge to determine that buyers love competition, sellers hate competition. Reduced competition is what the proponents of preventing wage are selling. I ask you not to buy their flawed arguments. And Representative Frame, the history of the prevailing wage has a nasty heritage. If you'd like to do some research on it, I'll, I'll provide it to you. I stand prepared to answer any questions. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Um, testifying again.